Hello, we welcome questions. This is Ali Nese here in the beautiful La Jolla Beach, uh, San Diego, California, the La Jolla Cove area. And uh, what I figure we'll talk about today is about the use, specific uh, use of ultrasonics in irrigation. Okay, I'll come here now to the Mission Beach, uh, San Diego. It's a beautiful place for sunset. And I figured I'll just continue the conversation here with you guys regarding irrigation. Now, there's one specific device that I wanted to talk to you about in terms of activating your irrigation, which I think is very important. And that is the use of piezoelectric ultrasonics and specifically the use of these U-bladed files to help activate your irrigants. Now, you could use irrigation activation in several different ways. You could use sonic uh, um, activation, you could use manual mechanical activation, or you could use piezoelectric ultrasonic activation. The use of piezoelectric ultrasonic activation can be done in two separate ways. It could be done in terms of continuous activation versus passive uh, ultrasonic activation. And what that is, the difference is that in one, you're using an ultrasonic with a continuous flow of fresh uh, material such as, um, you know, whether it's water, hypochlorite, or whatever other irrigant that you have, but it's continuously being replenished as you're ultrasonically activating it. And in the other uh, usage, you would be putting some hypochlorite in the canal and then activating the ultrasonic or activating that solution with the ultrasonic for a given amount of time. I think both are very useful and both have a place in endodontic therapy. What I tend to do myself in my uh, clinical cases is I tend to do the continuous flow of ultrasonic uh, at the beginning part of the procedure and throughout the procedure using just merely water and in combination with hypochlorite full strength hypochlorite basically. And then at the end of the procedure what I do is I uh, end up using passive ultrasonic irrigation, which is to add a hypochlorite in the canal and then activating it using the specific U-bladed uh, uh, file, which I want to talk to you about. But before I talk about these files, I wanted to just basically talk to you a little bit about the concept of irrigation, because oftentimes people confuse the term irrigation with, uh, basically they put it all in one word. In my opinion, the word irrigation should be broken down into two separate uh, goals that we're trying to achieve clinically. One is debris removal, which I consider cleaning, and then the other is actually disinfection, which is best achieved through the use of disinfectants. Now, so on the one end, we're trying to cut debris during our filing and then remove that efficiently with, with that aspect of irrigation which I call uh, cleaning and then what we want to do is we want to disinfect the space that we're left with with a disinfectant. So to that extent I prefer to use a continuous uh, flow uh, continuous ultrasonic activation using just plain distilled uh, water or sterile saline with my U-bladed files throughout the procedure uh, and then towards the mid part of the procedure on move away uh, and start to use the uh, full strength hypochlorite to do my disinfection. So what do I mean by that? Well, let's first just talk a little bit about that are the U-blade files that are inserts that go into these um, uh, uh, ultrasonic tips called E11 and E12 uh, that are meant for the Forza E3 ultrasonic unit. Of course, these would fit on any other ultrasonic piezoelectric ultrasonic unit that take this type of an attachment. Uh, but I have been using them on the Forza V3, which is the raster unit. I've tested them out in that particular fashion. Uh, so um, 
I, the, the, the numbers and the settings that I will recommend during this video are meant for that specific unit. If you are using a different unit, uh, these files will fit, but you need to do some experimentation on your own so that you can make uh, find the correct setting for your uh, ultrasonic unit. And the reason for that is because every ultrasonic unit has its own power setting, and uh, in order to get the best effects, you need to make sure that you have the right power setting. Okay, now let's take a quick look at these uh, two ultrasonic tips, uh, the E11 and E12, that can help deliver continuous ultrasonically activated uh, fluids, in this case uh, saline or sterile water, through the tip into the site for optimal cleaning during the shaping process. Now, the E11 and E12 ultrasonic tips take 33 millimeter long file inserts that are designed to work uh, with these tips specifically. Now, the difference between the 11 and 12 is one is meant for anteriors and the other is for posteriors with a 90 degree angle. And as you can see, the tip can be removed and installed using the ultrasonic wrench and can be adjusted to working length as desired for a given tooth. And in this situation, you can use the instrument during the final irrigation protocol for continuous flow or for passive ultrasonic irrigation. Here, the true tooth premolar model that uh, you see here uh, has been instrumented and filled using a viscous uh, blue gel. The E12 size 20 file tip is inserted and basically activated for one minute in place while gently moving up and down, making sure the instrument is free in the root canal. And you can see that during this one minute of activation, the continuous flow of water and its activation with ultrasonic energy removes the viscous shell from each root canal of the tooth. And, and this would be the final irrigation protocol that uh, you can work for about a millimeter from the apex with continuous flow of water, or you could place hypochlorite in the canal at the very end, shut down the water in the ultrasonic, and then activate the hypochlorite for about 30 seconds to a minute in place in order to enhance your disinfection. Uh, aspect of your irrigation. You may need to replenish the hypochlorite a couple of times. Another trick here would be to use a long diamond burr and cut the tip of this file inserts to a length of about 14 to 16 millimeters. And then what you could do is uh, you can use this instrument for a continuous flow of activated water on your way down the canal in the early phase of instrumentation to remove the debris that you cut with your files in a crown down fashion. However, since the ultrasonic energy only goes about a couple of millimeters past the end of the tip, uh, you may, towards the second half of the instrumentation, require the use of a 30 millimeter gauge side vented needle with positive pressure to clean out and irrigate the rest of the debris out of the canal. Or what you could do is you could then switch at that point to the longer ultrasonic tip that goes to the full length to enhance your continuous flow of irrigation for that phase. So you have a couple of options. It's just like the shorter tip in the early phases because it's easy to maneuver and, and, um, and use. Lastly, you may say, well, what about thin molar canals? Well, the size 20 is flexible enough to reach deeper in the canal and remove the gel without any problems. However, the key here is to make sure that the instrument is relatively loose in the canal. And more importantly, the power setting is at its lowest. With the Forza V3 ultrasonic unit, which I use, uh, I have already validated and tested and found that the best power setting for the specific use of these instruments is the E1 power setting. So that's the lowest uh, endo setting for power. And this prevents ledging or any other problems or complications um, that can happen at higher power settings because these instruments would actually end up cutting. So I have tested uh, this on that unit, but if you have a different brand piezo ultrasonic uh, unit currently, then you'd have to do a little bit of experimentation on your own to find the optimum uh, power setting for the specific use with these tips and files. Now my recommendation, however, no matter what ultrasonic unit you're using, use the lowest power setting possible. Uh, and never push down on the tip. If you have a curvature, uh, try to stay above the curvature. And uh, 
avoid contact with the walls with the tip of the instrument. So if you're moving up and down, make sure that the tip is still loose in the canal and keep it keep it unbound and free at all time and don't push apically on the dentin if there is a curvature. And then you'll be able to drastically improve your debris removal, which will in turn help increase your shaping efficiency as well as your irrigation efficacy. Okay, folks, as you saw, these ultrasonic tips with the U-bladed files are extremely helpful to activate and agitate uh, your uh, irrigants as well as debris removal during root canal therapy. So my recommendation is to give these a shot before getting into trying anything too expensive as they are very much within the reach of anyone in terms of their application and clinical implementation they help remove the debris very efficiently after cutting and shaping and then at the end you can use them to do passive ultrasonic irrigation to activate your disinfectant so that you can have a better chance of destroying and disrupting the biofilm that could remove it these ultrasonic units in combination with uh, with with very thin gauge um, 31 gauge side vented needles will help uh, get a large volume of activated hypochlorite down to the apical area of the tooth which will help enhance your cleaning and shaping and hopefully improve your success rate. Anyway, this is uh, my little uh, tip for you uh, today uh, coming to you from the beautiful um, uh, Mission Beach San Diego and enjoying this beautiful sunset uh, that is about to take place. So uh, with that, I'll leave you um, and thank you for your attention and in the meantime, let's save some tea. Yeah.